all the, the early stages, basically idea stage or, um, to you know, starting to raise outside capital is our, our sweet spot. And uh, we work with, the, um, with them and get them, um, help them validate their business model, get connected to mentors, and um, get connected to our programs. And also, the focus of tonight, get con them connected to the broader community. Um, so, welcome to Second Thursday at Venture Cafe. Um, we've been doing uh, programming here since Venture Cafe opened in the fall of 2014. We've been doing Second Thursday since 2011, 2010, something like that. So, so um, uh, it's been a great uh, partnership with Venture Cafe to do programming here focused on tech um, startups um, since, since they showed up and started doing things on Thursdays. And we're nice enough to reach out and involve us. So, tonight is um, uh, about our community partners. So uh, one of the things um, we uh, take seriously when companies sign up with us, so if you're a tech startup founder, um, you can, and aren't a part of I-10, you just go to our website, i10stl.org, and you click the big blue button that says register as a startup. Um, it's free to, to sign up with us. As long as you're building scalable tech product, we can help you. Um, but one of the things we do at our onboarding is not only talk to you about what I-10 can do, um, but also really listen to you about your most urgent needs, meet you where you are, and connect you to the broader community. So that's one of the things we want to um, talk about tonight. Um, and uh, we have... Can you guys have swag stuck in the back for anything? Oh, you have it up here. Okay. I mean, look at all this swag. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're gonna have at the end. We're gonna have to grab it and go that way, or the, or the six o'clock people are gonna be crowded. So we'll gather. Anyway, um, I think our maps. I didn't make them get them out here, but um, but we have uh, this map, which is our um, pathway map that we put together every year, and this is where. Um, we have two different maps that we are known for. The one is our galaxy map that sort of shows the different resources and how they're all connected and sort of categorizes them um, in areas like funding and facilities and education and, um, and community resources. But then you look at that map and you're like, why do I care about those and what are they and how can they help me? So we, um, a few years back, added this map, which is our, our pathway map that sort of shows if I mean, understanding that anyone, you know, we really wish the entrepreneur journal was this, this predictable and, and smooth, but um, uh, for, to not send our graphic designer into a complete tizzy, we, we, we made it nice and smooth. But we, we understand it takes a lot of resources. And the blue flags, as you probably can't see from the eye chart on here, but we have the hard copies in the back. Um, those are our programs. But our green flags um, are our community partners. And so that's what we're going to focus on tonight. We have. Um, Four, four people representing six organizations um, as our ecosystem grows. We all uh, just tend to take on more hats. So um, it will be great to, to hear um, from, all, from all of them. I'll let them introduce themselves in just a second. I wanted to just point out one other thing that's on our website. As they talk and you're kind of like, oh, um, how do, can I connect with them or whatever, I'm sure they will tell you that. But you can also go to our website at itnsdl.org slash ecosystem map. And um, we have our galaxy map digitized into a geographic map that has clickable links through to all the URLs of the 87 organizations that are on that map um, and organized by our, um, our different areas that are on the galaxy map. So community resources, entrepreneur education, facilities, funding, and um, tech training. So that's um, a great resource too, and um, they, it's an easy way to get connected to their, to their website. So, um, without further ado, I'll stop having and we'll talk about what we came to, let each of them introduce themselves. Um, if you can just go through, really quickly, go through the line and introduce yourself and the organizations you're representing, and then we will um, let each of you take your few minutes to introduce your organization so that we don't stand up here with bated breath for seven minutes wondering if the other three people. Help you go, Hi, I'm Mel Lambert. I am with St. Louis County Library and the Balsa Foundation. Ken Harold, I'm with SLU, SLU Start I Corp, and coming from the SLU ecosystem. Hi, everyone. I'm Caitlin Jones with Missouri Source Link. I'm also a Venture for America fellow. Would like to talk about that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Missouri Source Link first. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Colleen Mulvihill. I'm with the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership and the Small Business um, Development Center, SBDC. 
right. Who wants to go first in their elevator? Oh, sorry, go this way. <laughs> Okay, so uh, St. Louis County Library. How many people have library cards? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, about to be real judgy up in here. So um, St. Louis County Library helps entrepreneurs every day. We uh, have a lot of different resources and data that you have access to for free with your library card. So a lot of people think about books and movies and CDs and things like that that you can check out. We have electronic resources as well, including market, you know, demographic information, industry reports, a lot of different things that can help your startup. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one sessions, so you can come on in and sit with a librarian, and we'll uh, help you figure out exactly what information uh, is good for your business. And we do outreach, so we'll come out to your company if you want multiple people to learn how to use some of these tools. Um, we'll come out to your company and we'll teach your entire staff how to use them. Um, and then on the Balsa Foundation side, so the Balsa Foundation gives um, grant money to first-time entrepreneurs. And um, we do that twice a year. Uh, right now we are currently going through reviewing the applications for the spring. Um, and then we'll have another round coming up in the summer. So we give 10 $1,000 grants twice a year. So we give $20,000 a year to first-time entrepreneurs. Um, and then if you get through that, and you, uh, we also have a follow-up grant. So for anyone who has gone through the Balsa Foundation program, uh, there's a $5,000 grant available, and you can apply for that once you've gone through the original process. Okay. Again, my name is Ken Harold. Um, I'm representing SLU Start I Corp today. Um, I'm actually an adjunct in the MBA school and in the engineering school um, in lean startup, uh, entrepreneurship, design thinking, that kind of stuff. I have a weird background. I'm an architect, computer science, and AI, so I'm really confused as a human being. Um, so about two years ago, SLU uh, got in this position where we're thinking about how do we how do we help people figure out. If they have an idea, how do you how do you define that idea in a way that you can actually create a company? Right? That's the first thing. So it's the three whys that I talk about. First why is why are you doing this? Right? In other words, as an entrepreneur, you have to have a passion for something, right? You have to have an idea and a passion for something. So that's the first why. Right? Uh, I tell people that ask me what's you know what's the life life work balance, and then as an entrepreneur, I say it's pretty simple. A startup is your life. That's the balance. If you don't like it, go get a job in the company. Because that's what it's going to take. The second why is, why would somebody care? In other words, the second why is, why would somebody care about what you're doing? In other words, what problems are you solving for them? And what value are you taking care of that they have? And the third why is, why, why would somebody pay for it, right? In other words, what value are you giving and what is that value? So what we've done is we've stepped back with the Slew Start program. And what we're trying to do is help you go through a process. So it's a work session kind of thing. You go through a process. It's free to anybody. We have uh, everything from, um, you know, uh, really uh, powerful researchers in biomedical to business schools to faculty to students to entrepreneurs out in the ecosystem. We even do high school kids, which I call my stem cells. Because they come in, you know, before they, hit high, before they hit college, they haven't decided what they want to be in. So they have, they have a really interesting mind where anything's possible to them. They don't have kind of the, the, the breaks that some of us have when we're looking at stuff. So we take, take you through a two-week program. It's separated by another uh, two, two, two four, four hour program. It's a two-session, two four-hour each session program, separated two weeks. The first session, we, we tell you, we don't even want to hear about your product. What we want to talk about is why are you doing what you're doing, and what is the purpose behind it? And then help you figure out who are all the customers in the ecosystem, what are the problems they have in whatever that is you're trying to do, and what is the value that they're looking for, for some kind of solution or some kind of thing. That's all we talk about the first session. You're expected to go out and do five customer interviews between those two sessions. As soon as you're done with it, you come back and we kind of say, okay, what did you learn? And I can tell you right now, we've done uh, 25 cohorts in 20 months. That's 186 different ideas and about 300 people. I haven't had one that's come back and said, it's exactly what I thought when it first came to me, right? 
So it's really pushing you to think about what it is you're trying to do and, and that kind of stuff. So SLU started that program and then we uh, reached out for a grant from the NSF, National Science Foundation. There's so many acronyms in the government. Um, and just connecting words, uh, words between them. Um, the NSF grant is around trying to help researchers, people in universities commercialize ideas because they've been putting billions of dollars into universities and research. But they want to be able to turn those, those billions of dollars into real products, so commercializing ideas. So that's where we started. But then we expanded it out to we have a social cohort that we run for social entrepreneurs, a lot of them nonprofits. We run one around MedLaunch, which is around medical. And so we run very quite a few cohorts, clear across from everything from high school students can participate clear through to you know entrepreneurs like yourself. Whether you have a brand new idea, or you had a business for 10 years and you're struggling trying to figure out where you fit, and so that's kind of the program as we run it. If you want to go, now you don't have to go for an NSF grant, but if you want to, we are the launch pad into a $50,000 NSF grant to help you go through uh, over seven weeks and really figure out can you commercialize this, right? Do customer discovery where you have to do 100 interviews and figure out do you have a product or do you have a hobby, right? So that's the program. It's free to anybody. You can join, go through the program, and there's we send you different places depending on what your interests are. Hi everyone, Caitlin Jones with Missouri SourceLink. Um, so two sides, we work one-on-one uh, -on -one with entrepreneurs. We have a hotline where folks can call in to get connected to resources in the community. We serve any industry, any stage of business. Um, we have a statewide events calendar that puts on different networking and educational events that you can attend. Um, and we also work with the resource partner network, making sure that we're not duplicating efforts, making sure that gaps are filled, what do entrepreneurs need, and that's really kind of our goal to see um, how we can best serve Missouri to make it the seat for entrepreneurship between the coasts. Um, so we just released our Show Me Capital report and Show Me Jobs report. Um, we're really focusing on kind of the resources that are out there and how we can get connected to other partners in our network. Um, and then also with Venture for America, so I'm a Venture for America fellow. Um, it's a two-year fellowship program for recent grads and startups. Um, so I'd be happy to tell you more about that if you're looking to hire um, and kind of what that process looks like. Hi everyone, again I'm Colleen Mulvihill and I'm with the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership is one part of me and one of my hats and with the partnership I am the client support manager for our entrepreneurs and small businesses within our um, business center. So we have um, the Helix Center is our most, you know, kind of prominent flagship incubator, and we have the ag tech and biotech companies in that incubator, and it's in the 39 North footprint out there by Danforth Plant Science Center. Um, so I support the clients within the business centers. We also have one. We serve, of course, companies of um, all different industries. And we have business centers in Wellston and Lime and Chesterfield as well. And those are more generic, um, quite an array of different industries are represented in those business centers. So what we offer through those is affordable, you know, below market rate rent, warehouse and office space. At Helix we have lab space and office space. So that is part of my job and then I'm also an SBDC or Small Business Development Center uh, business counselor and with the SBDC you can get um, no cost counseling and sign up like a lot of the work that I do with clients is similar to what you were talking about Ken I'd love to talk to you more about that um, we do training and counseling on that side so I work a lot with my clients with the business model canvas, working out those customer segments and value propositions and testing your business ideas, um, whether you're in the idea stage or, you know, ramping up, scaling stage, whatever, wherever you might be. Um, I would love to help you. I can work with you one-on-one -on -one as a counselor and then also connect you to all the resources that we offer, lots of different training courses. In fact, Next week, I'm starting a three-session weekly class. I'm holding it at the Helix Center, and it is on the Business Model Canvas. 
and it's no charge to attend. Um, it's kind of a lunch and learn format, so that's the timing on Wednesdays, um, the next three weeks. So if you're interested in attending that, um, take one of my cards and connect with me, and I'll get you signed up as an SBDC client and get you registered for the class. I'd love to have you. Um, and then we offer a lot of different training uh, classes, like I have QuickBooks training lined up, and um, you know business planning. So I can help with all of those things as well. I can help you with your business plan, and, you know, kind of industry outlook information and things like that, and just kind of brainstorming and working on your marketing plan and strategic planning. So um, yeah, I would love to connect. If you want to take a card and a pamphlet. Um, you, some of you, you've already talked a little bit about your like ideal client or kind of what your focus is with, um, you know, like Mel, I think talking, could you talk a little bit more about, too, not just the grant, but you also have idea support and some of the other resources that you have and that you also, are you also one of the organizations that will fund a nonprofit still? Do you yes. give grants to nonprofits as well? Anyway, just talking a little bit more about your, yes. each of you can talk, drill down a little bit into how to engage, um, whether it's what clients, so people can go, oh, that's me, okay. and then and then when, you know, if you're rolling, you know, thing, or if you have specific cohorts or time timing of things. So the Balsa Foundation, um, so there is the grand side of things where we give you money, okay? um, and we do that twice a year. So we just like applications were due January 31st, I think, so they're in, so you missed out. But we'll do it again in the summer. Um, so look for that at falsafoundation.org, and it is for first-time entrepreneurs, specifically what we like to focus on. Um, so we're not really looking to help serial entrepreneurs, um, but really those first-time entrepreneurs in the St. Louis area, um, I think our footprint for that is 25 miles from City Hall, downtown St. Louis. So um, if you are outside of that, I'm sorry, but... Um, come see you with the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come see me with the light. <laughs> but uh, and we also do, uh, it's open to nonprofits and businesses. So if you are a nonprofit, that is another place to kind of get some money. We also do idea support. So you can submit online at balsafoundation.org um, if you would like some people in the ecosystem to look at your business idea and give you some feedback, um, which is great. Usually we try to get um, you know two to three people to kind of give you some really great feedback, um, and you know you can use that moving forward for whatever grant you're applying to. Like the Balsa grant. Because like that the is the first grant. question. As a Balsa reviewer, the first question <laughs> that I'm reading through right now is I'm being a good reviewer and I will yes. you your um, Did you take advantage of idea support? Yeah. So for people that are like, gosh, I just missed it in January. You have yeah. another few months to go out and, and take advantage of the idea support stage. And then when you the grant application opens up again for the fall award, and say, yes, I did take advantage of this, and this is what I learned. Yeah, and I highly recommend doing idea support. It's, it's been really helpful for people. Um, and even if you don't apply for the BALSA grant, you know, we do it for everyone. So you can do idea support even if you're not going to apply for the BALSA grant. Can you give a couple examples of the types of companies? Because I think sometimes people think, well, you know, like, what, you guys are one of the also the people Just that will them all. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, that will support not only a variety of industries but a variety of business models. So you will support somebody, you know, that's starting what sometimes in the ecosystem we refer to as a Main Street business as opposed to a scalable tech business, and so a little bit more diverse in your the business models or the types of entrepreneurs that you. Yeah. So I mean, we're not super picky with what industry you're in. Um, so for example, one of the, the companies right now, she um, has, uh, Nanacomb is the name of the product, and she built a new comb, basically, for people with kinky, curly hair. Um, and she's changed the way um, people look at combs now. And so, you know, it can be you're manufacturing a product, it can be you're in the tech industry, um, it can be your restaurant or a catering company and you just want to get started. Um, so really, it doesn't matter really what industry you're in. 
Um, we look at everyone, as long as you're a first-time entrepreneur. Ken, what, what is your like ideal stage? Of, you're talking about customer discovery, but what does that look like? Right, so um, what I was kind of describing, so, so far, since Slu Start has been about 20 months now, again, we've had 186 companies or ideas through 300 people. Um, it ranges everywhere from high school students with an idea clear to even people as old as I am with ideas. It, it includes people with a brand new idea that doesn't, they don't know where to get started. Clear through companies have been around for 10 years and just looking at the reduce. As I said, we, we typically have put this as, as what we call kind of rolling cohorts. So in other words, we get so many applications that what we do is we kind of fill a cohort and then we start the, the next one so that you get put in the next one. So it's pretty simple, it's free, we, it's a two session as I said. They're on Saturdays because what we find is with busy professionals, when you're doing your day job, you don't have time to spend four hours, you know, where does anybody find out four hours during the week to do anything? So we found that because of medical and everything else, we have it, uh, have it on the weekends. It's uh, Saturday, four hours. We take you through, uh, it's, it's you really working through your idea with a whole bunch of other people and teams working through their ideas. So it's, it's really a group session. Um, uh, that kind of thing, and then you get two weeks, and then we do the next session where you go out and you do customer discovery work. Uh, what we found is we found it works for any kind of idea. I've had uh, a woman who does black beans. You know, she was going through it on the second session. She said, you know what I found out? What do most people think about when they think about what other things do they eat with black beans? Anybody? Rice. 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 But that was a, a, a astonishing. She didn't think about it because she was so focused on black beans. So she, now she's starting to package things together differently. We have people that are doing games, we have a guy that's doing spice, we have very high-tech kind of stuff, which is kind of my background with AI and stuff. Um, you know, uh, uh, a port for doing brain surgery different, uh, a drug for doing uh, rhythmia uh, during a heart attack to slow that down easier. So we get the full range. It doesn't matter what your idea is. What we're trying to tell, tell you is step back. Instead of working on your business, or in your business, work on your, uh, on your business. In other words, Get through understanding what your customer base, what that ecosystem looks like, and what you're trying to do. That's what we're trying to take you through. I've actually had multiple people come through multiple times with different ideas. So they'll come up with an idea, they'll go through the program to see if it makes value or sense, right? I've had people that will come to one cohort, first session, can't make the second, will come to the second session cohort. I've also run separate kind of Saturday <coughs> sessions around, okay, now that you kind of have your business model, how do you put a product roadmap together? So we try to help you pass just what the initial idea is. Do you really have a product? Do you have an idea that's going to, and who are, who's going to be your customer base? To, okay, how do you think about the roadmap model? Anything else? Yeah, okay. well, can, uh, can you talk a little bit too about, uh, Caitlin, uh, about the um, resource rail? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, the resource rail is kind of our version of the map. Um, so that's going to be the different resources that are in our network. Um, we also have the resource navigator on our website that's going to have all of them. The resource rail is just a quick paper snapshot. Um, but think of it as a subway map. So you're going to hop on where you are. If you're ideation, roll out, what, what stage you're in. Um, and kind of connect you to the different resources for your industry. Like Melissa had said, different industry, innovation, med, second stage, that sort of thing. Um, we're actually in the process of doing a reprint of that because we've come across so many new resources that we want to make sure that we capture what's available for those. That um, so there's a few ways to get connected with us. We have a hotline where you can call in. Um, on our website, we also have a web form that you can fill out. And you can also um, do it in person. I have some request forms with me if you're interested. Um, and what that request is going to be for is a personal action plan. So our goal is to connect you to the right resource at the right time. Um, so really kind of understanding where you're at in your stage of business, making sure you have a business plan, you've done your market research, um, really seeing what, what you need and what's the best fit for you. Um, and your resources are statewide. So yes. if, if for some reason yeah. there's something that you know is in Kansas City or Springfield or um, Cape that makes yeah. sense for your business, you can find that out on your Yeah, yep. so any industry you're engaged in statewide, for sure. You, you drilled down into yours, but Colleen, do you have other anything to add about like client, like um, well, fit? Well, we do, yeah, client fit is, you know, for-profit companies as opposed to non-profits um, because we are economic development and it's increasing the tax base and all that good stuff. Um, so I was just wondering if you all, you know, like how many of you are in the idea stage? Exciting. 
very cool. And, uh, and, we can, and if you, we can open it up to questions. I mean, yeah, that's okay. a great segue okay. into opening well, up for questions. Let's that do was that. My next you thing. been listening so, for too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and okay. I just like to clarify that you do not like to get on that path. You do not have to have a bicycle belt for two. Okay. This is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> there was, yeah. I'll, I'll go back. They were visual. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> but you can also notice, like, I drove the graphic designer crazy, but he doesn't have a helmet until his idea no. has made the curve and has something to protect. And then his clothes get better, and by the end, the woman's in charge. <laughs> and, and she's lost her heels. She has the heels on the first curve, and then her heels are gone by the end. That's funny. Any questions? Yeah. Like what? For, our, do you want to for either for I-10 or for any of our yeah, kids. Yeah, for any of us or I-10. Do you want to have a Do I have anybody that has a question? <laughs> you have to fill down to it. I, I do have megaphones that are stress balls. If you have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Right. You're it's just going to start throwing stuff. It's going to be crazy. So what kind of resources are you all looking for? How about that? Like, uh, um, what he said was kind of interesting. Actually, everybody said it's pretty interesting. And yeah, I just the cards and stuff, and then I'll keep you hotlines really busy. <laughs> all right. I have a card. I'll yeah, give you mine. Our cards are right up here. <laughs> you, you, you can find us. <laughs> Other questions for our panelists? I'm sorry. Thank you. About how to engage with them or where to find them? Or... They answered all your questions already. Right. What other kind of resources are you all, you know, do you find yourself looking for or wishing you had access to? Yeah. Who's not on this panel that you wish was here? <laughs> what were you hoping to hear tonight, maybe? Just information on business plans, uh, things that would allow you to get funding from different sources. Yeah. One thing I would like to say that she talks about the business canvas. I actually, sorry. That's right. I actually, um, my background's really weird, as I said. Um, so I actually went through the lean construction process back in the 90s when I was heading up innovation for HOK, the large company. So one thing that I realized is that most people in architecture, we do what we call problem seeking. You can't design a house for you, right? If I just kind of design one and say, what do you think, right? Really understanding what problems you have is, I think, the core to anything. You can't produce a product unless you know what problems you're trying to solve. So we actually, I actually kind of use the Lean Canvas, um, which is a little different business canvas, I think is a little bit later on after you kind of figure out what the problems are you're trying to solve around those values for each of those customer sets. So that's what we kind of do. We, we kind of take you through what I would call the 101, figuring out what is it that you're really trying to do and where does it fit in the world. And then moving on to a lot of these other services that then takes that idea, right, and helps you take that idea that you now kind of crafted and stuff and move it kind of forward. So that's kind of the process I think that we see as at least a slew is provide that for nonprofits, for for profits, for students, for anybody that's going to go through the process. Yeah, I think that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So we have business resource, uh, business plan resources at the library as well. Um, in fact, tomorrow morning at 9:30 a.m., the SBDC is coming out and doing a business plan basics program um, at the headquarters, St. Louis County headquarters location. But we also have. Um, like a business plan builder uh, tool that you get access to with your library card for free, um, where you can ba it basically walks you through what you need to include in a business plan, um, and then you just hit save, um, and it's there. It spits it out in a nice little format for you. Um, so if you are looking for business plan templates, that's a good tool. There's also Kaufman Fast Track, which is a third-party tool that also has a business plan builder template to it as well. Um, and it's a great tool to use too. From a uh, 
uh, another site that we, that a lot of uh, I-10 companies use is um, Canvanizer. Um, so you can pull that up that has both the lean canvas and the business model canvas if you're not looking to do a full-fledged business plan. I mean, these, I think long can be gone with the days or the 60 page, you know, found business plan. Things are too dynamic for that. Um, but getting in and using the tool, whether it's the lean canvas or the business model canvas that allows you to put the key pieces of your business model all on one page, figure out what your assumptions are, go test those in the customer and interviews and, and the process, go come back, modify that, iterate, iterate, iterate. Um, and so that, that's a common tool as well. Um, the one thing we found, and that's why we kind of set the cohort the way we've said it, is that we can get 10 to 12 companies, about 18 people typically by each cohort. They can be a full range of types of, of companies. And it's really not us talking to you, it's you working through your, your project and your problem, right? I guide, I talk about for five minutes, give you some stories. Uh, you work for about 20 minutes with everybody else and yourself and your team. And then we move on to the next topic. So it, it kind of builds on itself so that by the time we're done with those two weeks, you basically have an idea of what you're trying to do. So that's the one thing we're trying to do is not trying to impale any kind of knowledge on you. We're letting you kind of kind of discover it. That's what we're doing. We're doing a workshop that's letting you discover your idea and how you move forward. I feel like this has turned into like a competition of resources. No, no, I think they're all competitive. I'm just kidding. We're very complimentary. Right, right. We, all, we all work together really well. So in fact, I'm thinking like, ooh, I have clients that I want to send right. to you. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to get I actually have a client up. knowing that I'm working. So I'm working with two startups right now as a fractional CTO. Knowing no Inc. A voting software came through the South, the, the South County incubator from you guys, and that's oh, where I first met them yeah. and started mentoring yeah, yeah. them. And then now they are they just got a million dollars from Shavitz last year, and they're growing an so fast. <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying about this yeah. ecosystem. This ecosystem is all Absolutely. dynamic, different are, than the Silicon Valley. This is a dynamic system where we all share. Right. In fact, Melissa and I work together on the St. Louis Equity and Entrepreneurship Collective, which is a newer couple of years, but we're really getting it off the ground now. And uh, initiative um, to bring equity, um, you know, to see entrepreneurship and the resources through the lens of equity for the underserved um, entrepreneurs. So, um, so there's tons of resources in this awesome city of ours, and um, you know, we hope that you really take advantage of some of them and, and ask the questions, get connected. As far as like. Uh, working with me sometimes it's just really nice I think um, you know as you know having entrepreneurial um, goals myself it helps a lot just to connect with someone um, to brainstorm ideas and you know to really make yourself vulnerable be open to just talking about it batting it around thinking about you know well what ifs and just those hammering out those customer segments. I find that a lot of my clients, um, you know, you get in your head and you stay there. It's hard sometimes to get out of your head. Um, so, especially in defining your customer segments, um, it's just, I think it's really helpful to get outsider perspective on have you thought about this or, you know, um, what about this group? And you know, just kind of brainstorming and, and, and feeling comfortable and being in a confidential you know environment that um, you can share those things without being concerned about your ideas and so forth. I think the other thing is these are all free resources to you, mm -hmm. right? We're not asking, we're not pitching you to try to or make revenue or whatever. We're we're and that's what I love about St. Louis. We're all here to help you. Consistently, I consistently send people to I-10. They're sending their their startups to us. Mm -hmm. I send them to Arch Grants. I send them to yeah. Apple Innovators, which I did ten cohorts and two of the Amherst. So yeah. we're all trying to share and help anybody that has an idea to move. Yeah. And, and so I think sometimes entrepreneurs are afraid to, you know, they they, they don't want to. Yeah. They just be like, oh, they're just afraid to mention yeah. that they're involved. I'm like, no, this is the point. Yeah. You know, like take advantage of everything. Right. And yeah. and um, you know, if you're a tech product company. Join I-10, we will connect you right. to um, mentors that understand that space, help you get going in your business model right. canvas, but also encourage you to sign up for SLU, I-Core, and that 
adds to what you're doing with your mentor. And then you can be even more um, quickly ready for our later stage programs, which is our, our investor readiness program. Um, and go to see Mel, and she can help you find market data. <laughs> like, I mean, with the, guys, this is not your yeah. grandfather's library. I mean, like, go to the freaking yeah. library, the number of free resources, and, and how does somebody, yeah. what, how does somebody that does not live in the county, St. Charles, St. Louis County, get a St. Louis County library card? Do you have parity, like, for St. Charles County residents, and how do we, and, or yeah. city residents, or? Yeah. And that, I'm going to give a question. Yeah. So, that. if you live in St. Louis City, St. Charles County, St. Louis County, any of the municipalities that have their own libraries, like Ferguson, Rock and Old, you can get a St. Louis County Library card. And in fact, I brought some with me today. So, you know, if you, yeah, yeah, if you want to sign up for a library card, I have some. Um, but, so, okay, we have, with all of those, if you live in Illinois, um, you can still get a card with us and have access to the data, but it's $50 a year. Um, so keep that in mind. Jefferson County is the same way. So if you're out in Jefferson County, we don't have reciprocal programs with that. Yes, you have a question. Oh, yeah. What, what was that hotline? Yeah, yeah. so Missouri Source Line, um, it's 866-870-6500. Um, and that's how anyone call. You'll speak to someone, tell us a little bit about your business, um, what you're looking for, and then you'll get connected to have a personal action plan sent out to you. Thank you. 866-860-6500. Yeah. And that's also on your website. Yes, and I have cards. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay. So, Colleen, you were talking about um, having this jumble in your head and trying to get it out, and I think my reluctance in taking that step to using any of these resources as being exactly this jumble inside my head, and I, I don't know how to articulate it in a way that I think is going to make sense to other people. Um, how accomplished are you at leading through that and kind of helping us get down to what, what it is that we're trying to do? How accomplished. <laughs> she does improv, but also on the bottom of her head, too. Dealing with a jump Well, not accomplished, but. <laughs> no, yeah, I love doing doing that. I also have, um, you know, coach training, so it's like, um, you know, that's what I do. The answer is very. Um, <laughs> so that shouldn't be a barrier to come into. Absolutely so not. No, I love that. Should, I think it's yeah. a requirement to come to yeah, talk to college. Just, you know, it's just about ans asking the right questions and getting you to talk and hopefully making you feel comfortable talking to me. Yeah, and I think not being afraid to come to anybody, there's really no wrong right. way to enter the ecosystem. So even if you're not a tech product company, you know, come talk to me and I'll connect you to people that right. can help you even if we're not the, the right fit for you. So never be afraid to be like, I'm not really sure how to navigate this crazy. A, a few, I hear there's resources, and I'm not really yeah. sure how to engage. I mean, anybody is just is uh, um, happy to. And we get people that will apply on our site sometimes, and that are clearly not, you know, not a fit. And I always follow up and say, you know, and give them the the links and connections to the folks that will be. So yeah, thank my you. like, you know, it's no cost. Um, my entry fee or whatever is only that you, you know, sign up to be a client. And that assures you confidentiality as well. And um, when you have started your business or increased your employees or gotten a loan or approved for a loan or a grant or whatever, then I ask you to complete an impact form so that we can keep doing what we do because we are, yep. um, in my case, federally funded on the counseling side with, um, from the SBA, the Small Business Administration. So you know it's a big work nightmare. And you know, we're really everything. Not so much for them. Not for them. Not for you. Not not for you. <laughs> yeah. For you, it's going to be a link. Go sign up to be a client, and and, that, and then we'll set up a time for a phone call to start. And then if you want to get together, you know, I'll share just different resources. Like I'm always sending out the Boss Foundation link. Like go <laughs> to the Boss Foundation site. Um, we actually yeah. have a relationship with SBDC, and when you join I-10, you join SBDC. I don't know if you knew that, but like we have a, a, our agreement with, with SBDC, so if you join I-10 um, as part of our onboarding, you're already um, in the system for SBDC, so you can, you can go see Colleen and she, you're already in there. Um, because we, we value that um, that collaboration and, and 
try to make it easy for entrepreneurs. But yeah, thank you for bringing that up because some of us are, um, but we'll, we'll use the phrase data as our currency. So our, our services are free, yeah. but, um, but when we ask you for your information, please answer that call so that I don't have to come sit on your porch. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, so when I have a training yeah. event, like yeah. yesterday I had a training, a lunch and learn at our Lima Business Center, and it was put on by the Lima Chamber. So we work with chambers and different, you know, organizations that help businesses. Um, and so basically I block the door and say, you know, you have to fill out my training registration form and sign it and do my training survey. You know, like that's the cost. Okay, so, you know, that's that's just so that I can prove my, you know, value in offering, that we're really offering the services. We want to be able to say we know you when. Yeah. <laughs> I think the value of any of this stuff, you know, I've been in three star, I've been in three startups myself. I'm working with two right now. We we've been where you guys are. I have an idea and I don't know what to do with it. Or I have I get a lot of this. I have five ideas and I don't know which is the best one to go after, right? And this kind of stuff. So we've all been there. We've we touch a lot of people that are in the same space. So the oper other opportunity you get from this kind of resource is we know other people. So we connect exactly. other people that we know. So that's if you have exactly. one idea and we have another person that has an idea that's kind of compatible or whatever, or a resource mm -hmm. or whatever, we will connect it to. That's the same way. Exactly. Is we're, we're, we're sharing not just uh, kind of helping you through a process, but we're sharing all the resources that we've run into over, you know, I've been doing this for quite a few years. Yeah. So that's the value. And I think one of the yeah, other things, too, that we try to do um, with our clients, and, you know, we, especially at I-10, I know we do, a lot is connect you to each other mm -hmm. um, because the value of peer learning is and so um, and not just learning about the business thing but being there in support of one another because being an entrepreneur can be a very lonely um, roller coaster that if you haven't done it and you don't know you know if and you always feel like you have to put on a brave face and you can't, you know, for you your... You feel you have to do it alone. Team. You have to yeah. do it alone, have to do it a brave face. And so try and look for, you know, these you know communities of cohorts. Um, you know, we, we do an event called Founder to Founder on a monthly basis. So founders can just come, it's literally just show up and whoever shows up gets to decide what they talk about. We don't, as I tend staff, can stick around. They make it their own. Um, but it allows people to just, to so you feel like you've got some support in this process. And um, and people that that are going through the same thing can, can be helpful. So yeah, I, can I yeah. Say yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so no, I don't consider myself a great networker, but just to give you an example <laughs> of how we all do work together and how valuable these kinds of you know the venture cafes are, um, we the partnership actually um, hosts the 39 North Venture Cafe, which is every third Tuesday. It's only once a month and not every week, and that's held at the John Day Fourth Plant Science Center. So. Long story short, I got to do my improv games for entrepreneur session. I got to do it here once. Yay! And there's one of my, one of my improvisers is here. Um, so I got to do that at John Danforth as well. And um, uh, I met, you know, an entrepreneur, obviously lots of them, but one uh, gentleman that does, you know, marketing like SEO optimization and got connected to him. So I'm responsible for putting on all this training and finding the best presenters and programming. So, you know, he's willing to give back to the entrepreneurial community because of course, in all of our nonprofits, you know, we usually don't have a big budget for these things. But when we work together and we say, hey, come in and show my other clients in the business centers and my counseling clients, um, you know, give some tips on SEO and up, you know, search engine optimization and give some tips and tricks and then, you know, that's going to hopefully just kind of bring some energy to your business and get you some business. You know? So, I guess I just wanted to point out that we really do work so well together as uh, an ecosystem and, and we're all partners in that. So. And when you're talking about connecting people to resources, that is exactly what Missouri Source, their resource yeah. navigator on their website. I cannot recommend, I use it all, the, I use it almost every day to like, hey, what can I, yeah, oh yeah, all the time. It's really excellent, it's great. It has almost every resource you could ever imagine um, available to look at for people. And you can drill down and say, I'm looking for funding or I'm looking for marketing help and then it'll just show you the list of organizations in St. Louis who do that thing. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so much about navigating. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, yeah. Any more questions?
questions? That was Missouri one source navigator, is that what you said? Um, uh, yeah, source. From Missouri source then free source navigator. Okay. So that's going to be on our website. You can put in your zip code, industry, make it more specific. Um, and yeah, like you said, kind of what you're looking for if it's funding, mentoring, accelerator space, et cetera. All right, well, we've got a few more minutes in the room, but I think at this point, we'll, I think we'll wrap up and our, my, our panelists will stay up here for a few minutes, have some uh, things you can pick up, whether it's the hard copy of the resource rail or, or you guys' cards or Colleen will lob things at your head if you bump off request. Um, but to switch you, my panelists, thank you so much for being a part of Second Thursday. And, and, and so we have other questions specifically for one of them. Um, you know, we've got probably another seven minutes or so in the room. Um, and you're too afraid to say to the room.